Good morning, church. Thank you for joining me again for another daily devotion. We're in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to be in verses 3 through 6. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 3 through 6 says, For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you. But they will give an account to him who is ready, who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel is preached, even to those who are dead, that through judge, uh, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. Um, right in the very beginning here, um, Peter is talking and he says, For the time that has passed suffices of doing what Gentiles do. If you look in the verses just prior to this, He's talking about um, since Christ suffered, arm yourselves with a mindset. Live the rest of your life in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. And he says, now here in verse verse uh, 3, he says, For the time that is past suffices for doing what Gentiles want to do. Uh, in other words... You know, as non-believers, before we came to the Lord, we've had enough time living after those passions. And, and those passions are typified by people the Bible calls Gentiles, basically non-Jews, irreligious people. Well, I'd say irreligious. They were um, idolaters. Normally, uh, they had false religious systems. Uh, they didn't know the Lord, and it was exemplified in everything they did and how they lived. It, it, it proved they were not born again. They lived after their passions. That's ultimately what it is. They lived after the flesh, and so, not after the Spirit. And so um, what he says here, so the time is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do. In other words, we, we had a life full of that. And he says, and he gives examples of, of how the Gentiles lived. And we, we went over this yesterday in Galatians 5 and also a little example in James 4. But basically, you know, living in sensuality and in passions and in drunkenness and orgies and drinking parties and all this kind of stuff. He just he's just throwing everything together. In other words, there's just a, a disregard for spiritual things. These are all things that please the flesh. And he says, with respect to this, they are surprised when you what? When you do not join them in the same flood of debauch debauchery. And so what happens is that they're surprised that you're no longer doing what they're doing, and now they are maligning you. They're speaking evil of you, and and this is this is why um peter's talking to the church he's saying listen you got to arm yourselves with get ready to suffer because when you are filled with the spirit you're going to be going against your own flesh you're going to be going against the way the world does things and acting out in their flesh and you are going to get um persecuted is what's going to happen you are going to suffer as you as christ's light shines from within you and you are a person who is filled with the spirit and you have that love joy peace patience gentleness, kindness, all those fruits of the spirit the galatian talks about pouring out of you while the rest of the world is acting upon their passions they are picking up rocks and throwing them at people they are defying authority or they are abusing authority or whatever it might be um they are uh, those are all worldly um, f uh, fallen responses before a holy God, and 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 Paul and um, Peter here is is just pointing out, you know, we've had enough of that. Uh, that's that's the old life, and now we're following after the Lord. And as we're following after the Lord, expect, arm yourself, get ready to suffer, as you're living in a fallen world with fallen people who expect that you to go with them, and whatever it may be. And he gives a bunch of examples there. Uh, but he says they're going to malign you. And I think this is important. Um, we need to arm ourselves as the church. We need to get ready to suffer, not to take up a cause, a worldly cause, but to take up Christ. 
to have the same mindset as him, to be willing to suffer, not for evil doing or these human causes, but for Christ and for his gospel and for his way of life. And I think it's, as we're looking here, we're going to receive, we're going to be maligned in sometimes. But then uh, Peter warns here, he says, hey, check it out. But they are going to, going to what? They're going to give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. There is going to be a judgment, an ultimate judgment. And so in our suffering, we need to remember that um, it's only a matter of time before they are going to be judged. And even in with that view, as let's say we're following the Lord and we are maligned because we now follow Jesus and we're not giving in to, you know, um, all these all these types of things here. We're saying no and we're going to follow the Lord. We're going to, um, you know, be married to one wife. We're not going to get drunk and get high and all this type of stuff. Uh, we're not going to worship any other gods. There's only one way to the Lord. Uh, we're going to get kickback and uh, we're going to be maligned because of that. People don't like it when you disagree with them. Uh, but here Peter says they're going to give an account to him. There's going to be a judge, and he's ready to judge the living and the dead. And he goes on, he says, For this is why the gospel was preached. Notice the grace even in the judgment here. He says, Listen, judgment's coming, God is ready, but this is why the gospel was preached. Why? That they might live in the Spirit the way God does. And that's ultimately um, why the gospel is preached, that people who were once wrapped up in all this stuff um, would be born again, would be saved, and they would live now the way God does, according to the Spirit, in spirit. But the idea here is in verse 6, he says, For this is why the gospel is preached even to those who are dead. He's not saying that you're preaching to dead people. He's saying that the gospel was preached, and some of those who heard it, they're dead, and the reason why that they're dead is that they might have been judged in the flesh in the way people are. In other words, they might have been executed even for believing in the in Christ. Um, they might be dead now in the flesh. They might be executed in the flesh, but they are actually alive in the spirit the way God is. And so that's that's kind of the point is that there's victory in suffering. There's ultimate victory in suffering. So when I when I look at this passage this morning, uh, my encouragement to you is there's going to be a strong, strong pull for you to go back to uh, worldly ways and worldly ways of thinking. And the world is, is around you is going to support that. They're going to say, you need to do X, Y, and Z. And uh, if you don't do that, then they're going to start to malign you. And the thing is, is we follow Christ now. Um, we follow Him and do we speak truth to a, a society? Absolutely, we speak the truth of the gospel to the society. But I tell you what, when you start flowing upstream and against uh, the downstream of the world's passions, expect persecution. And I pray that you would um, be counted worthy to be persecuted for the name of Jesus, that you would be so in love with the Lord and follow him so wholeheartedly today. Um, uh, that your light would shine so bright in the darkness that you perhaps would get the uh, attention, so to speak, of of the world around you and, and just expect their resistance. But at the same time, you're preaching the gospel to them that they too might be called out and might truly live um, after the Lord. So I have to ask, are, are you... Are you swimming downstream with everybody? Or are you swimming upstream? Not being belligerent, not being mean. That's not what we're talking about. Going against the flow in the American way. That's that's not what we're talking about. Are you kingdom minded? Are you focused on the Lord? Are you denying yourself and following Jesus today? Pray with me that we would and expect resistance. And don't be surprised if people are surprised that you're not going their way. And take every opportunity not only to live the gospel um, but to proclaim it as well by your living and by your words may they match up may they match up for me too and so may the lord bless you today may he challenge your heart on all these matters and uh until tomorrow morning god bless you 
Uh, let's pray. Lord, we just uh, love you, and we ask that you would make us keenly aware of the world we live in, that we were in, we are in it, but not of it. And Lord, will you keep us pure and set apart for your purposes in this world? And Lord, when we receive the criticism of the lost for not following their ways and their mod- their methods and modeling and the way things should be, uh, Lord, may we just take refuge in you, uh, that we know that on that day we're going to stand before you, uh, and you'll be seeing, you'll be uh, the one who rewards us. We want to seek your glory now, Lord, in this life for the time we have left. And we pray that many would come to know you through us today. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. God bless you.